morning. I am on Kernsey. I am so excited. A really nice stranger just drove me from the airport to um, Candy Gardens in St. Petersport. Um, and I can't wait to see everything. Um, okay, so Victor Hugo lived in Guernsey for 15 years from 1855 to 1870 in exile. And he was exiled from France because he opposed the emperor, Louis Napoleon. He moved from Paris to um, Brussels. Um, but then in Brussels, he published a, an essay called Le Petit Napoleon, which is obviously an enormous insult to Louis Napoleon. So, um, because Brussels didn't want to be on France's bad side, he was exiled again to Jersey, and he lived on Jersey for three years before um, some other exiles on Jersey published some um, Republican progressive writing and they were exiled again from Jersey. And because Victor Hugo stood up and supported them, he was exiled too. And then he had to move to Guernsey and he arrived here on the morning of October 31st, 1855 with his mistress of 50 years, Juliette Druitt, and his son, um, Francois Victor. And um, later came his wife, Adele, and his daughter, Adele too, and his son, Charles. And um, when he arrived, um, he had to get off the ship and get into some fishing boats to get to the harbor, to get to the, to, to the docks. And because it was so windy, his um, papers almost fell in the ocean, including his manuscript of Lim's Lob. So it's a good thing that didn't happen. And this statue was a gift from the French in the early 20th century. Um, as a way to thank Guernsey for their hospitality towards Victor Hugo. And um, it's Victor Hugo walking in the wind, which really shows how interconnected he was with the island. Victor Hugo would not be Victor Hugo without Guernsey. One example of how Guernsey was influential to Victor Hugo is that he would spend a lot of his time drawing and he always went out with his drawing notebook when he went out hiking every day. So he would sit by the water and just, he was very inspired by the horizons of Guernsey's seascapes, the ocean, which I can see behind me. And, um, but the thing about being on an island is that the horizons never change. It always, it's just always the ocean. So over time, after painting the same thing over and over again, his drawings became more abstract. And um, this was way ahead of his time. If you look at his drawings, they're unlike anything that you'd see in the mid 19th century. And that's just a, a testament to how much Guernsey influenced him and his work. Right next to the Victor Hugo statue is the Victor Hugo Garden, which was planted by the Victor Hugo in Guernsey Society. And it's inspired by uh, plants that were in Victor Hugo's garden in Hoodville House, and Derek Chet's garden in Toilers of the Sea, his novel, and other flowers that are related to his life and works. Just reading from a sign here in the park, Victor Hugo saw nature as a book from which to learn where God found expression. He disliked pruning flowers and trees, preferring gardens which encouraged visits from insects and birds. Indeed, what more could you want? A little garden to amble about in, an infinite space to dream in. At his feet, whatever could be grown and gathered, over his head, whatever could be studied and meditated upon. A few flowers on the ground and all the stars in the sky. This, I believe, is Victoria Tower, and I'm going to go inside because Victor Hugo finished The End of Satan, one of his writings, at the top of the tower, and he carved his initials with his mistress inside. And check out this cool key I got from the museum. It is super dark in here. I am so scared. There is a lot of wall space in this tower. I don't know where they carved their initials, um, but it's a cool tower. It's pretty old. This might be the most beautiful library I've ever seen. Oh my gosh. And they have so many books of Victor Hugo. This is 
one of his drawings. Oh my gosh. I'm going to see if they have any original archives. I can... The librarians were very nice and they did find me some archives, but they were, none of them were primary sources and I have a lot to do today, so I had to leave. But if you go to Guernsey, you must visit the library and candy gardens. It's beautiful. I've lost my passport and my wallet. I'm really stressed out that I lost my passport and my wallet, but we are at 20 Hopeville Street, which was the first home of Victor Hugo in Guernsey. And then in later years, it was the home of his mistress, Juliet Dorit. And they nicknamed it Hopeville Ferry. So this is the house. And I'm on my way to the tour, even though I should really be going to the police station. Update, like three hours later, I found my bag with my passport and wallet in it. Thank God. And I made it to the harbor of Guernsey. Um, this is where Victor Hugo would have come in on the 31st of October, 1855. Though apparently it looks very different today than it used to back in the mid 19th century. I don't think this road was here and there was a big shipbuilding industry in the 19th century, so there would have been a lot of warehouses along this, uh, along this harbor that aren't... Well, actually, I don't think they were torn down. Rather, they are repurposed into different businesses and hotels and stuff like that. So it does look a lot different, but this is the harbor. This is the Shipping Crown, which is obviously a pub, as it says, but it also used to be a hotel, um, the Crown Hotel. And this is where Juliet Dritt um, stayed in her first night in Guernsey, but I don't think she liked it very much. I think she thought it was too bad. Another very important location, just opposite the harbor, um, the town church. Um, this church featured a lot in his novel Toilers of the Sea, although I wish I could give you more information on it, but I read this book many, many months ago, and I didn't really pay attention to the church, but here it is, and it's full glory. And there is a new bench of Victor Hugo and this octopus, which, well, it's actually called the devilfish, and it is uh, basically the entire point of Toilers of the Sea. Sorry, this, the wind and the sun is very weird. This rock says, this rock of hosp hospitality and freedom, this corner of old Norman lands where the noble little people of the sea live on the island of Guernsey. And that's from Toilers of the Sea, 1866. Here's the old corner. Um, I don't think many of these buildings have been torn down and rebuilt, so and pretty much the same as they were in the mid 19th century, but repurposed. So Victor Hugo used to spend a lot, a lot of time in the old quarter. He'd go here all the time, I guess, probably especially when he moved here because he would always visit the antique shops here to collect things for his home. I haven't talked about his home yet, but it, as you'll see from the pictures, it's elaborately decorated and uh, most of that stuff came from antique stores and just old stuff he found lying around on the Channel Islands, so it took him six years to decorate his house. And this is the old quarter. Um, when Victor Hugo lived in his house in Guernsey, he planted a acorn in his garden and he said that when this uh, tree matures, then um, Europe will be united as one country. So this tree, this oak tree, was planted as an acorn by Victor Hugo and it is called the United States of Europe Oak Tree. And um, it looks like it has matured, but do we have a United States of Europe yet?
This is Victor Hugo's garden at the back of his house. Um, there's the United States of Europe oak. Um, and this is his house. Cornet right here on the end of this pier right here. Um, it's very old. I don't know how old. And apparently Victor Hugo gave a fisherman a life vest here, but I really don't know the details. It doesn't seem that significant. But on the other side, here is Havilet Bay. He could see this bay from his house, which is somewhere up there on the, on the hill. And he used to swim in this bay a lot. I'd, I'd imagine it'd be pretty cold, but he was a hardy man. Um, and um, that's Havilet Bay. This is looking south towards France. And there's the harbor, the seafront. While I'm resting my feet, I might as well tell you some things that Hugo published while he was living in Guernsey. He published Les Miserables in 1862, of course. He published Toilers of the Sea, which is a book dedicated to Guernsey. He published The Man Who Laughs, which is set in London. He published a collection of poetry, Les Contemplations, which he used the proceeds, uh, the proceeds of to buy his house. Um, Hopeville House, The End of Satan, um, Legend of the Century, and there are many, many others. He never stopped writing, um, but those are a few that he published while he was here. Day two of Guernsey. Here is another view of Havilat Bay. They say that Guernsey has beautiful beaches, but this is not one of them. But Victor Hugo would go swimming. He's crazy, what can I say? We made it to Tremaine Bay. It's lovely, windy, cloudy, but this is uh, one of the spots that Victor Hugo used to hang out. Uh, people were swimming here earlier. I imagine that was freezing. It was so After getting pathetically lost, I have finally found my way to Mulan Huet Bay, which is on the south of Guernsey, and another place where Victor Hugo would come and be quite inspired by the landscape and the horizon. And finally, the sun has come out, so it is it a magnificent view. Here's another view of Mulan Huet Bay, down in the rocks. And I've checked, and the water is indeed freezing. Another thing about Victor Hugo in this bay is that he would always take us picnics here. Uh, however, I did not pass any grocery stores on the way here, so I am not having a picnic. But, I lied. It's time to say goodbye to Guernsey. I will be taking the ferry back to the UK.